Hey guys, thank you for having me today. I am apparently Dr. Mike Isertel, and I will be talking to you about the scientific landscape of healthy eating, all about healthy eating from a scientific approach. So just a little bit of background. I think understanding healthy eating or talking about it is pretty worthwhile because if you eat healthy, so that's supposed to increase not only your lifespan, but it improves your quality of life as well. So everything gets better when you eat healthy, and it's a very common concern because pretty much everybody knows that, right? If you look at somebody's food and you point at it, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to be very proud about how healthy it is. They're like, ah, ah, see, ah. Or they just start making excuses like, well, today is, well, you know, I've been really stressed. Then who knows? Don't judge me, right? <laughs> so it's either one of two. Everyone knows that eating healthy is pretty important. Unfortunately, there's a lot of contradicting advice on the internet and all forms of media about what it is that eating healthy is. And a lot of that advice is very ideologically based. By ideological, we mean that there is clear, moralistic right and wrong. If you eat some kinds of foods, you're not just unhealthy, you're a bad person altogether. And if you eat some other foods, you're at home with the angels. So some of this is helpful. A lot of it's not really helpful. The way I got into this sort of thing was that I have been an athlete my entire life. I wrestled for a long time, powerlifted for a long time. Now I'm a bodybuilder and Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappler. You can tell by my funky ears, right? And as I got bigger and stronger and more muscular, I realized that the size and all this hard training was probably going to be costing my health somewhat. I wanted to minimize it by at least understanding how to eat healthy. And then later, as a professor teaching the scientific basis of healthy eating, I really had to know my stuff. So here I am talking to you guys about it. So. Of course, the closest way we can get to the truth, the path to the truth that is the most likely is science. I think we all know that by now. We just saw an awesome video about the physical state of the internet. No one's doubting science anymore. But when you talk to people about the science of healthy eating, a lot of times they'll say things like, well, you know, I can go online and find a study to support anything. You think milk is good? I can find a study that says milk is bad. It's all up in the air. But unfortunately, that's a misunderstanding of how the scientific process works. It turns out that science works based on the sum of the evidence. And it's very difficult to do. You have to take all of the studies at the same time and look at the net perspective that they offer into what the structure of healthy eating actually is. Because if you just go one study at a time, you can just cherry pick accidental studies, right? Studies have error rates, and then you find all kinds of things just aren't true and then it balance. You could be looking at the 1% of studies in a field that say one thing, whereas 99% say something completely different. So if you look at everything, you end up with a ton of data. When my team and I wrote a book on this very uh, topic, we ended up pooling so much data together to support our position and learn that the size of the citations was the exact size of the length of the book itself. So we just put it online uh, because it would have been ridiculous, like 150 page book and page 75 runs out of stuff and just starts citations. I don't know how many people read links for fun, but we had to put it somewhere else because there's so much data. But that's really good because that means we know a lot about healthy eating. There is a lot of consensus there. And remember, in science, there are no absolutes. So the rest of this presentation is presented in likelihoods. Right? It is a very good probability that what I'm going to say is true. But of course, everything is always, to some extent at least, up in the air. What does the landscape of he healthy eating look like according to science? Well, it's really kind of a pyramid. Not the USDA food guide pyramid, which said apparently you have to eat breakfast cereals at the bottom of the pyramid all the time. You guys remember that? It was like breads and cookies and rice and stuff. All the real food was somewhere else. So this pyramid is more scientific. It's more theoretical. It says that some features of healthy eating matter a whole lot. They're the base of the pyramid. Other features matter a little bit less and a little bit less. And some of them are just almost trivialities. And when people concern themselves too much with those and not enough with the base, they make mistakes in healthy eating. Right now, we're going to take a look through all of the phases of this pyramid together and try to make a little bit of basic sense out of all of this. So the first most important part of healthy eating is calorie balance. It is by far the most important. It has probably around a 60% effect size compared to everything else you can do for your diet. So if there's one most important thing, watching how much food you eat is the most important thing for your diet as far as your health. Because primarily, body weight is very impactful to health. Having a healthy weight is the number one thing that nutrition can offer you to make you healthier. It's not the only, but it's certainly the biggest. Healthy weight 
It doesn't come in a perfect, uh, just one number that you have to be or else you're bad. Remember, no moralizing. There's actually quite a broad range over here. So if I were hypothetically 5'4", which clearly I'm at least six feet tall, so I don't even know I picked that number, you know, I could weigh anywhere between 105 and 170 pounds and be okay and not have to worry about my weight too much. But the reality of the matter is that in a lot of Western countries, the USA included, a lot of us are above those top end ranges and weight loss is the most often prescribed and best idea for a lot of individuals who are struggling with their health from a dietary perspective. There have been some individuals that say body weight is not important, that we should just focus on the kinds of food we're eating. I don't think that is supported scientifically. Calorie amounts, the amount of food we eat and our body weight is ignored at our health peril. It's very important to be clear about that. So, Okay, we got the calories down. How much food you're eating, how much you weigh matters for sure. Matters a little less, maybe about 20% is what kind of food composes those calories that you eat, the calorie sources themselves. It turns out that there are a couple of groups of food that are very good to eat for the majority of your intake. For example, fruits, veggies, and whole grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats like avocado and olive oil. Those foods should pretty much be the preponderance of your intake, but it's not all or none. It turns out that if you get most of your diet, maybe about 75% from these healthy sources, you can have a little bit of junk food on the side, and I promise you're not an evil person. Well, maybe you are, I just don't know you that well, but it has nothing to do with your food, right? It turns out that if you do most of your healthy eating, you can have a little bit of junk food, and it's not a big deal. There's no reason to have these all or none plans of cutting out junk altogether. You just have to eat a little bit less of it. Next. For about 10% of the variants, already a very small component, but an important one, are macronutrient amounts. The macronutrients are proteins, carbs, and fats, and it turns out that our body needs all of these in a minimum amount. But it turns out it's only about 10% of calories. So if we add all those together, we get 10% protein, 10% carbs, 10% fats, we have 70% left of calories to fill in with any macronutrients we want. And that means that as long as you get your minima, Extremes in macronutrient intake are totally fine and very much equivocal for health. What does that mean? That means that anytime someone says, well, carbs are really bad for your health, you can simply point them to vegans who consume up to 80% of their diet and carbs and some of the healthiest people in the world. Individuals that follow the paleo diet eat lots of protein and fat, more than many recommend, and are healthy as can be. Even individuals involved in bodybuilding. <coughs> <coughs> Right? They eat amounts of protein that seem completely obscene and very little of anything else, and they're some of the healthiest people in the world as well. And even, and then the saying this in the 90s would have been pure insanity, high fat diets that are low in carbs and low in protein are very much vetted as super healthy via direct scientific investigation, as long as you get your calories right and you make sure most of that food is from healthy sources. What about nutrient timing? How many of you guys have ever heard not to eat past a certain time at night or else? And who knows what that or else is and crazy elves come and get you? That's always what I thought it was. I could probably take on a couple elves. I ate late at night. I kept waiting for them to show up, but nothing ever happened. So it turns out that nutrient timing is a little bit overrated. People seem to think there's some kind of magic formula, but they studied alternate daily fasting where they literally you don't eat for a day, and then the next day you eat, and you don't eat for a day. And people would think, how many of you guys, just intuitively, raise your hands, do you think that like, just feels like not a good idea, like that's not healthy, right? That seems crazy. And they've studied up to eight meals a day, which a lot of us think, oh man, you see someone who eats, eats eight meals a day, and you're like, that's a, that must be the healthiest person of all time. That's sheer dedication. It turns out both offer their health benefits and trade-offs on the net balance. Alternate daily fasting is just about as healthy. It even has some unique health benefits compared to eight meals a day or something like that. There's a wide range of meals that are totally cool to eat. Nutrient timing by itself accounts for roughly 5% of the variance in health, most of it coming down to that little tip right there. If you eat about three to six times a day, for most people, you get all the nutrients you need and you supply your body with energy. How do you guys think it feels to take a call from your boss at 5 p.m. saying you have another project, stay late at work, when it's one of your alternate daily fasting days and you haven't eaten all day? Right, you pick up the phone like, who's this? Like, I'm your boss. I don't have a boss, man. <laughs> I just need a nap. Uh, oh, let me call you back tomorrow when I have food. Right? That's a little bit weird. So usually three to six meals is best. Fit to your own personal schedule and your own lifestyle goals. Next, we come into the last 5% tip top of the pyramid, not accounting for a lot of the variance in health, contrary to a lot of popular opinion, are hydration and supplements. Here's the good news about hydration. It's largely self-regulating. 
over millions of years of evolution, all organisms have pretty much figured out that when they get dehydrated, there's a thirst response, and it works incredibly well. It doesn't work well in a couple quirky scenarios, like if you're sweating a ton in sport, your thirst actually lags behind your hydration enough not to ever endanger you, but usually to make you too dehydrated to perform at your best. But for just walking around daily living, your thirst does a good job of telling you when to drink so you don't have to slam water preemptively, right? That's actually a myth. In the early 2000s, everyone had Nalgene bottles and was running around, and if you stopped drinking water for a second, that's it, you were done, right? It turns out that's really not the case, right? Some more uh, sort of bad news, I guess. A lot of supplements, most supplements, almost all supplements, are unfortunately ineffective at their claim goals. Yes, that means if you go to any popular nutrition store, you can walk across the walls and point to stuff, and if you point to it and ask grandfather science or something like that, to me really, if I was to walk in with you, right? What does this do, what does that do, what does that do? The answer is generally pretty much nothing, right? And that kind of stinks, but it's good news because it really simplifies stuff. Here's the deal, there are a couple of basic supplements that work for health, multivitamin maybe for some people, although if you eat a very complete diet, even that's not really necessary. A fish oil tab or something like that, healthy fats, but if you eat a really good diet with a lot of fish sources, you don't even need that. And then if you get in regular fluids, you're doing okay for yourself and you don't have to worry about this stuff overly compared to something like calories and food composition, right? You do, however, have to be very wary of claims. How many supplement claims, you guys ever watch TV way late into the night? Uh, and watch the like, super supplement will make you literally Superman. And you're like, where's the buy now phone number? I can't be here all day. I gotta go to sleep. I write this number down so I can be Superman tomorrow. And unfortunately, it just doesn't really add up. And uh, many of these claims are just a waste of money. Unfortunately, a waste of your time. Right? So lastly, let's figure out some take home, really simple implications from all of this. Because we just ran through like volumes of data in the span of about 10 minutes. Here's the deal completely unequivocal that being physically active, and the more you can the better, is awesome. And you want to stay at a healthy weight by controlling the number of calories you eat. You don't even have to count calories, just food amounts. If you're gaining weight or if you're on a healthy weight, eat somewhat less, get back into the healthy weight. That is huge. It's the number one thing you can do to help out your health through nutrition. When you are choosing foods, eat mostly healthy foods, just like we talked about, Fruits, veggies, whole grains, lean meats, healthy fats. A lot of you guys, how many of you guys intuitively know what healthy food really is? Like if I point to a cheeseburger, I'm like, healthy? How many of you are like, well, yeah, sure. Hey, <laughs> potato chips, of course, <laughs> right? No, we all pretty much know what healthy food is, but we can have a wide ranging variety of it. We don't have to restrict ourselves. No carbs, no fats, no proteins, all that kind of stuff. We just have to do a good job. Meet the macro minima. I'll tell you this, meeting the minimum amounts of protein, carbs, and fats is incredibly easy unless you do some kind of really, really wonky diet where you're intentionally trying to cut stuff out, right? There are diets uh, that fruititarians, for example, propose where you only eat fruit. I mean, and I mean that completely literally. There is no caveat to that, right? It's a fine way of doing things if you take some extra precautions, but you have to take a lot of extra precautions. So if you're eating a relatively normal diet, you don't have to worry about meeting macro minima. That really happens itself. You get enough protein, carbs, and fats just eating healthy and eating a varied diet. Time sensibly. When you're relatively hungry and you need energy, eat. When you're not, don't. And if wherever number of meal times you land per day, that's on you, and it's really not a big deal either way for your health. Don't let people guilt trip you into eating after 6 o'clock. All right, tell them that you have also been waiting for the 6 p.m. attack gnomes, but they just never showed up, right? How long can we wait? You want to hydrate normally, drink water with your meals. If you're not thirsty, you don't have to drink. You can consider some basic supplements, maybe a multivitamin, maybe fish oil, and maybe not. That's something to talk about to a nutritionist or a doctor. If you don't have any deficiencies, you're probably good to go. Most people don't. And here's the deal. There will be another health documentary coming out, probably soon. Like there have been many health documentaries before. And health documentaries are usually not the kind of boring stuff I'm talking to you guys about today. It is life and death stuff. Like we've all been poisoned by insert group here, big pharma, big food, big beef, who knows, right? And they're all out to get us. And a lot of this kind of ideology just turns out to make these diet rules that are ineffectual because they put so much pressure on us to alter our normal lifestyles. It turns out if we eat relatively healthy and are physically active, we don't have to buy into crazy ideologies that steer us away from doing the right thing. Here's the deal. It's an amazing world we live in, but I think it's even more amazing if you approach it with logic, science, and evidence.